were signing to go to college in either the ACC or the Big Ten. Once again, Jay Heath Jr. will be going to Boston College to play for the Boston College Eagles. Jay Heath Jr. the Boston College Here to celebrate uh, three young men, uh, Makai, Mikhail, and Jay, uh, on their signing a national letter intent to go to the university of their choice. Signing day, I was nervous. I was nervous when I woke up. Then I had to do an interview. I was nervous in the interview. I like to see people do good. Like a lot of people in the DC area like to see people do bad. Me and Jay known each other for 10 plus years. That's like, that's like big. See my man going to the next level, doing a good thing. Like, see everybody around me do good, for real, for real. Once I finally signed a paper, it was like a relief. Uh, now I can just play and be free. Yeah, that was good. My mom played basketball, but the most, the most thing she told me it wasn't even, it was like off the court. Like, she's like, okay, your character, like, your character will take you further than your talent. So she like, told me always be presentable, off the court, respectful. You never know who's watching. I'm going to play an important role, you know, um, getting this with the right people and putting it in the right hands to, to be successful and stuff like that. It's been a long road. It's been a long, hard road since they was six years old and it's finally come to light. They was introduced to me by uh, a, a coach by the name of Coach Keith Washington. And I think at a very early age, um, Seven years old when we started doing this. We had some um, some great ups and downs. Um, I, count, I count the downs as a learning tool. It's been shaky, man, sometimes, but I just got through it. When people stuck by my corner. I got people in my corner help me through it, and it's where I'm at today. Thank God for the good and the bad. Coach Furry played a big role, Coach Fine played a big role. Uh, they basically just believed in us and knew that we was good, that we was gonna be good. Uh, they knew that we was hungry and wanted to put the work in. It had a lot to do with just being a basketball coach first. That's how they came into, that's how we, you know, got to know each other. You know, coach, uh, player relationships. I remember them being uh, three years old and after school, um, I will have them in a room. I have this little basketball court that I will connect to the door and have them in the room just shooting shots all day. So that was the beginning of their, you know, basketball career. They wanted to be out on that basketball court. They wanted to be around their friends. At an early age, I always made sure it was fun, made sure they wanted something they wanted to do. They put no pressure on it. Until they got 12 years old, then we kind of started changing that philosophy a little bit. Yeah, my mom, my mom, I mean, she been with me since I started. My mom and dad, actually, but she just happened to be there that day because my dad was at work. So it was like a relief for her, too. She was happy, you know, all the hard work, she, all the money, time she spent. Sometimes we just have to let our kids know that they have a voice, too and allow them to be them. The kids don't know our hearts for them, but we do. I kept them out the streets and kept them in the gym. Where they come from, they, you know, from the city, uh, where the city life can actually take you in the wrong direction. And I know from basketball, uh, it can actually help change their life. They're not my only sons. I actually have six, but they are the ones that's, uh, that I'm very, very proud of. They just stuck with us through all the growing pains and all, all the fights and arguments that we had until we all just stick together and came as one. When you had a lot of um, athletes competing for, you know, 60 to $120,000 scholarships, uh, and it has to come out of your parents' pocket. And if you can 
get that get that education by doing something you enjoy, playing basketball. I mean, it can actually change your life. And for the Mitchell twins and so many others who took it seriously, uh, they they kind of rewarded themselves and took that pressure off their parents. A lot of things that we are looking forward to this season, but I'm excited for them um, because it's one less thing that they have to worry about. And, um, you know, they can move on with where I'm going or is it official or anything like that. Um, so I'm really excited for them and their families um, so that they can get this off their plate. Shout out to the basketball, doing it for the youth. Stay out the streets and stay in school. Work hard, play hard, busy gang, bang, bang. My name is Arize. Uh, you know, I'm a man of many different uh, talents, but you know, probably most notably known for uh, the basketball events I run in the city. Started a company, you know, fresh out of college with my two best friends. Um, been a very interesting journey, um, and now you know it's kind of culminating with uh, with this season. When I started coaching basketball, I really didn't know how to get my kids playing year round. I played in a couple local tournaments and it just didn't satisfy. We would miss, games would be late. We wouldn't, we would get there, we wouldn't have games. Oh, I met this young guy by the name of Arize. We were sitting and we were just chatting and just talking about just dreams, like th thinking big on the future, things that we wanted to do. You know, I've, you know, obviously since diversified into, you know, film, tech, you know, a bunch of different things, um, you know, my, reputation precedes me as far as, you know, those things haven't been profiled in, you know, ESPN Undefeated, Washington Post, etc. But um, I think this is my most uh, powerful project to date, being able to uh, get behind the scenes and uh, kind of like show everybody like, you know, some of the, the plight of, you know, building a program or building a company or building anything, a brand, um, you know, from within the city. I've been on the Rize probably almost 10 years now, just watching him growing the game, starting out with Hoop Group, all the way to Hoop Magic, you know, just developing his craft as an event coordinator and an entrepreneur, and making himself one of the better entrepreneurs and event coordinators in the region. He talked about, you know, he, you know he's going, he has these illustrious leagues, and I said, well, won't we put this thing together? I'm over to Wilson, I'm trying to build something, you're building something, uh, let's get together and make it happen. Before there was a team takeover, you know, before there was a, you know, more basketball, it was, you know, just events, you know, was getting, in the, getting in the trenches and building relationships and utilizing relationships to build events, which, which ends up, what ends up helping to, 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 to make events or, or make companies like, like the one that he and Rize has built with more than basketball or my program, my team takeover. But it started with the foundation of having that grind and that hustle and having that ambition to want to be great at what you do. Playing in the more than basketball events um, has been beneficial for Wilson High School. Um, played in a lot of them over the last, I've been a head coach for five, so the last five years. He was a major cornerstone of this program. Um, when you're able to get guys to come in and see your gym, when you're able to get your kids, all your teams to play, financially it's hard. He's given us great rates over the years as he's done for a lot of people over the city. He is for this city, he's for our children, he goes and talks to them outside of basketball and that's one of the things I appreciated about him. As of 2012, I've been doing events at their school and, you know, been kind of like involved with the programs, you know, as many, as well as, as many other inner city programs, but, you know, being involved with Wilson to the point um, that I've been involved with and watching them kind of build to like a national level, you know, it's kind of been like an amazing uh, thing. It's been beneficial for us, one, for exposure wise and, you know, uh, able to play teams around the city that we normally wouldn't play, not the city, but the area that we wouldn't play. And uh, it gives us a different environment. Um, um, I think the city comes out um, and supports it. And uh, I think it's important for that to keep happening. You know, watching H build from, you know, JV coach, you know, back when we were having Wilson play against DeMatha, play against the Kill Car, and play against, you know, all these different, you know, type of teams to him becoming a head coach and, you know, having him play like, you know, national schedule with, 
you know, highly touted players and stuff like that. It's been kind of amazing to watch, you know, his development, you know, watching him elevate to the point where he's working Nike camps, you know, CP3 camp, you know, things like that. It's been a pleasure to watch as well. Some of the other teams used to be on the other side where they get all the pub, and then now we're on the other side where we get all the pub. And But the events that more than basketball runs still kind of harnesses the same thing and brings together different populations. And it's been really good for the city. You know, a lot of times when people, you know, nationally hear about D.C., they think about, you know, kids who definitely represent our area, but not necessarily from the city, not necessarily dealing with the same type of issues and, you know, same type of trials and tribulations and pitfalls that, you know, come with growing up, you know, within, you know, the district. Brought a lot of competition here and, and gave us some good opportunities. We played the math the early on when people wouldn't play us because we wasn't top of the heat. Well, um, he was able to give us some of those opportunities. So I really owe Rize a whole lot of gratitude from, you know, helping to build this program to where it is now. You know, not for nothing, being able to be somebody who, like, helps kids realize their dreams. You know, me watching a kid like Allende Hakim, Ricky Lindo, Johnny Schuler taking it back, you know, all these type of guys who, uh, Kalen Cumberland, uh, all these guys who come through the city and like, nobody knew who these people were. And they don't do not only all things they've done on their own, but through playing on my events and the platform I've given them, we're able to earn like college scholarships and be able to perform and build their name in the city and build a buzz outside of the city. These kids need them, these coaches need them, the city needs them. Guys, as always, every game we go through a scouting report of what they do and how they play, all right? Talk about how they play first, press all game long, one, two, two. They're going to be aggressive in their man-to-man. -man. They're going to be aggressive. So every time you dribble, they're going to try to run through you, all that. They're going to try to do it. So if you're not strong with the ball, they're going to take the ball from you. Go in there, try to make a layup or dunk on somebody. That's, that's the idea. Take the contact, finish through the contact. Run our stuff, take the shots that you're given. You miss a shot, get back. Don't talk to the refs, that's my job. You know, I just knew they was more prepared than us, but that's still no excuse. It was our first game of the season. I knew we was going to come out sluggish. We just, just know every game is going to be a good game this year because people want to beat us. That's how it should be, though. That's how we was last year. We wanted to be all the good teams. We got a no great, bro. Jay, you run it. Jay, you going to throw. Up, you throw the ball. Ming, you here. Come off Kai's side. Boom, cross screen, cross screen. Kel, right. come around. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ming, you are right here on Kel's side. Come across to the middle. Back, back screen for Kai. Kai, go up. Slam that Let's go. Let's go. Let's keep playing hard. Let's go. Tigers on three. One, two, three. Tigers. Going into halftime, I said we wasn't running our sets. And we was letting them speed us up with all the little pressing they was doing and stuff. And we just can't get sped up. We got to keep calm, break everything. They get this double press, so we think we need to shoot the first shot we get across. Not throwing the ball down low, we think we got to shoot the three because it's open. And just play the game and run our sets, do what we do. The ball needs to go down low. The ball needs to go down low. We were one for nine from the three-point line. We drive to the lane, the backside guy is always open because he's 6'10". Throw the ball up! Don't throw a scoop pass, don't throw a bounce pad. Throw it up to where everybody does this and looks in the air to see if he's going to dunk the ball. Drop the ball off! We still played hard and gave it all we got. And um, we fought to the end. So I just feel like now the, the season should be exciting.
I think it went well. Um, ended up winning by 11. Um, so it was a closer game than I wanted it to be, but um, you know, they're a good team. Bitch. On the next episode of Run This Town. Mr. Hodges, I heard you had something to say. Can, can you turn it off for one second? Just one second, please. Because on Friday, they're going to have athletes, and they're going to be running around the gym trying to hey, get man. every steal. They're going to press on Friday. It's going to be a man-to-man -man press.